What's going on, everybody? Paul here from Hashtag Sports, trying to give you the four major things you need to know for the Buffalo Bills versus the Baltimore Ravens coming up in this AFC playoff matchup. Okay, lots of stats and lots of things that I'm sure a lot of folks are throwing at you about why Buffalo has the advantage over Baltimore. But let's get a little bit deeper and talk about some things that everybody, even people without a ton of football experience, will be able to see uh, to know if the game is going in Buffalo or Baltimore's direction. So I'm going to give you four points that you need to pay attention to to determine who's in control of this football game. And there's going to be some stats involved. So those of you who like stats, great. They're just really going to kind of emphasize some points. They're not the reason the points are made. If you go back and watch film, uh, some of these things are, are very clear. Uh, and some of the stats back them up. But let's get to the bullet points for um, how the Buffalo Bills can beat the Baltimore Ravens. Bullet point number one. The Buffalo defensive line and linebackers can't get fooled. So let me tell you what I mean when I say that. Gap integrity is incredibly important against the Baltimore Ravens because they like to, lot, they like to do a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors, right? So their center and their guard may pull backwards and uh, float to the left on plays that are actually designed to go to the right. Uh, they do this actually r often uh, where guards, tackles, and the center will pull in direction opposite of where play is going. Uh, now, it is often enough to be confusing, right? They don't do it on every play. It's obviously a large mix of that. But uh, it's important for the defensive tackles not to go along for the ride with them, right? Those defensive tackles have to maintain gap integrity, and they have to allow the linebackers to clean up. That's the next point is you can't let your linebackers get sucked back down. Baltimore loves to run all these misdirection fronts, and it is very confusing uh, for defense to try and keep up with that, especially with as dynamic an athlete as J.K. Dobbins and, uh, and Lamar Jackson are. So you need to maintain gap integrity. You want your defensive tackles just going forward. You don't want them going side to side. You're going to know who's winning at the line of scrimmage just simply by are the defensive tackles shifting with the offensive linemen. Against Baltimore, that's a big no-no. You don't want to do that. Uh, we saw some of this uh, against San Francisco as well. San Francisco does a lot of the same things where they'll pull in opposite directions. Uh, than, than the direction that the plans the play is really designed to go. So if I'm the defensive coordinator, if I'm Leslie Frazier for the Buffalo Bills, I want my linebackers to stay disciplined to their gap integrity, and I want my defensive tackles not to be shifting with the offensive line. I want them to shed and go. All right, bullet point number two. The Baltimore defense is hyper-physical. Hyper-physical. They love to play aggressive man-to-man -man coverage. They blitz an incredible amount on the defense. But here's where things get sticky for Buffalo um, is you don't have very big receivers. You don't have very physical receivers. So Stephon Diggs, I'm not going to say that he's not physical, but I mean, if you're comparing Stephon Diggs to, um, you know, uh, Corey Davis, Corey Davis is clearly a much more physical receiver than Stephon Diggs who cut from a very different cloth. But the secondary of Baltimore loves to play really aggressive man-to-man. -man. And with the way that we've seen these other playoff games officiated, we haven't seen a lot of pass interference calls unless they're really egregious. And Baltimore is going to strive on the fact that they don't think the refs will be able to pull out the flags in the playoffs. They haven't so far with the games that we've seen. So I think Baltimore is, is very content with just being as aggressive at the line of scrimmage and being aggressive at the top of routes. Now, Again, Buffalo's size tells you that's a disadvantage. Let me tell you why that's actually an advantage for Buffalo. Uh, first off, with as dynamic an athlete as Josh Allen is, a physical receiver or a receiver getting bumped off his route early isn't really a big deal here. Um, you've got multiple weapons on this offense, so if you see that a route is disrupted early, uh, Josh has the creativity and, and the available options to find something else open. Plus, a lot of times throughout the course of the year, we've seen Josh get creative with his receivers. If these receivers are going to get, or if these cornerbacks are going to get physical at the top of routes, then those routes are eventually going to start breaking off. And as the play breaks down, Josh is going to find somebody that's open. So uh, I will tell you that this will be an incredibly physical game from a secondary standpoint. Uh, probably the most physical game you've seen all season. Uh, th these corners are going to be very, very, very nasty uh, at the line of scrimmage. They're going to be nasty at the top of routes. They're going to be all over these receivers, and that's on purpose. They don't think the refs are going to be able to call enough pass interference penalties to make uh, the juice worth the squeeze, right? So that's the deal there. But 
Don't let people tell you that's a disadvantage for Buffalo just based solely on the size of the receivers. We've seen this entire season how Josh has been able to create when the routes aren't there. Let me correct that. Um, Josh has been able to create when the initial play call routes have not shown him what he needs. And as the play breaks down, he buys some time um, and he's able to uh, to connect downfield. So um, don't let somebody tell you that that's a disadvantage for Buffalo just based off the size and the hyper-aggressive nature of this Baltimore defense. It's not. Buffalo is going to be just fine. All right, bullet point number three. You beat Lamar Jackson like other NFL teams beat 2018 and 2019 Josh Allen. You make him play quarterback. Now, mind you, that's that comes from... That means a lot of different things, right? But look for this Bills defense to do something they haven't done all season, and that is hide um, hide the true blitzer, right? So Buffalo has kind of told the last five or six games when blitzes or when pressure is coming, um, you kind of know it, right? You know where it's coming from. They do they do faint to that a little early. Um, watch Buffalo in those third and five, third and six situations to have multiple guys standing at the line of scrimmage. We haven't really seen that from them. We've seen it a few times, but I'm talking standing defensive ends. I'm talking standing defensive tackles. Think Baltimore Ravens versus Peyton Manning, right? Uh, obviously, for very different reasons. Peyton Manning, uh, you were doing it to confuse coverages uh, and where pressure was coming from. But, but from Lamar, you could still fool him. Um, and you could fool him with where pressure is going to come from. And I'm not saying to bring a ton of pressure. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. But you need to take away their ability to uh, to use that pre-snap motion uh, against you, right? And you need to take away their ability to move the ball to the ends of this offense. They love to run to the exterior. And I mean, they love to run to the exterior. And we're going to get to bullet point four where we talk about that. But uh, if you have a bunch of your defensive players standing near or at the line of scrimmage with no showing of who's going to be coming and who's not, you're going to find success against Lamar because he's going to panic. And yes, does that leave your guys in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the backside? It most certainly does, right? We're talking a lot of single high looks. We're talking getting guys down near the line of scrimmage. But those are the risks that you have to take. And it's not something we've seen Buffalo do. And it's something I don't know if Baltimore would be prepared for if Buffalo uh, were to be successful at it. So watch watch Buffalo to be uh, different with the way that they present their fronts going into those third and four, third and five, third and six situations. Um, I do not expect Buffalo to be as physical as Baltimore in the secondary. It's just not in the DNA to be so. Uh, but I do expect to see uh, Buffalo not be afraid to pressure Lamar Jackson. All right, bullet point number four. Don't be afraid to get burned, and don't be afraid to burn somebody else. This is going to be a feast or famine offensive showing by both teams, and this is not the game for Buffalo to try and establish the run. It's not. Um, it's not. Baltimore has a lot of offensive tendencies, and so do the Bills. So let's talk about them a little bit. And first off, let's talk about Baltimore's tendencies with the run, because they have shown their preference this late in the season. We have a whole season's worth of stats, but they certainly lean to one side of the football field. And that is without a doubt, they lean to the right side of the football field. Let's just take Lamar Jackson just as an example. We'll get to the rest of the offense in just a second. Lamar Jackson on his rushes has rushed across the right side. So either to the right end or right tackle. So that's either at the right tackle position or outside of it 63 times this season. Whereas the left, it's been 36, right? Lamar leans to the right side of the field. Why use right-handed quarterback? That makes sense, right? Uh, we don't see, Josh has similar numbers. Um, Josh isn't as, obviously, it, it's not as polarizing as Lamar's numbers. But quarterbacks typically, right-handed quarterbacks, typically don't like to go to the left because it's really hard to get a throw off. We saw Josh knife a throw in last week um, against the Colts. I mean, going to the left, just beautiful, beautiful mechanics, closes the shoulders, like just beautiful mechanics, really hard stuff to do, um, especially to throw the ball 30 yards downfield while you're doing it. But Josh has the ability to do that. Lamar does not. Um, so Lamar has to stay to the right side of the field, and he does. But that's not the only place that Baltimore has tendencies. They often lean heavy to the right. So Baltimore has run up the middle. So that's from the inside the guard positions. Uh, so anything from the guards and in, right? They've run up the middle 179 times this season. Just running off the right end, they've rushed 155 times this season. 
right? So just looking at the right end, they've run it as many plays as they have up the middle of the football field. Um, now, if you combine the right end and the right tackle position, it's 206. So they've actually outrushed just to the right side more than they have the entire middle of the field. But that's not all. Across the left side as well, this is not uncommon for them. They love to push to the exterior. They want their quarterback to create on the outside, which makes a lot of sense for them. And they want to use that pre-snap motion to run to the outside. That's the whole goal. They can run up the middle, and they do run up the middle. Uh, and they are just as effective up the middle as they are to the exterior. But this is an offense that's, that's going to have to work on home runs. Uh, Buffalo's going to play a lot of single high looks. They're going to leave guys in single coverage. Mark Andrews could have a field day against Buffalo uh, because he could just sit in the seam. And you just have to accept that, right? Mark Andrews could go out and catch 10 passes for 115 yards and two touchdowns. And you just have to be okay with that because if those are the only passes Lamar Jackson completes, you're going to win that football game. With that, let's talk about Buffalo and what Buffalo can do to kind of change tendencies, right? Because Baltimore, without a doubt, leans to the outside, specifically the right side when they want to run any running plays, which is, a primary, which is majority of their offense. When we look at the Bills' passing game, it is a little bit of a different story. So we obviously know Zach Moss is not active, right? So TJ Yeldon is going gonna, is gonna to be activated. Sean McDermott's already told us that. But let's get to some numbers here. The one thing Buffalo can do uh, that they haven't done all season is actually involve the running backs in the passing game. So let me tell you a little bit about the Bills passing game. The running backs, all of them, all season, have 136 combined targets with 56 receptions. Am I might have done the numbers wrong? It's not 136 targets. Oh, let me do the math correctly this time. Oh, yeah. No, I, I did the math totally wrong. Uh, 71, 75 targets. So the Bills have 75 targets from their running backs for 56 receptions. That number makes a bit more sense. I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. We saw actually a couple, the last game, Josh started throwing to his running backs as a true check down, which is something we really haven't seen from Josh. A lot of times it's been these screen passes or some of the targets have been, you know, as he's clearing the pocket, he's just got to get away, you know, get the ball off to somebody, he gets it to a running back and, you know, that goes as a target and a non-catch. So we haven't really seen Josh use the running backs as a true check down option until last week. And we saw it a bunch, right? We saw it in the second half of the football game, and that was actually great to see. And we didn't see it, we didn't see it 15 times, but we saw it enough to say that Josh was working through his progressions and got, uh, and got to a point where he knew the checkdown was there and he took it. That's a ton of film study for him. That is not something that he has done often uh, throughout his NFL career, but it's something that they could really do uh, this upcoming week and supremely take advantage of a Baltimore defense that just simply hasn't seen that. Um, TJ Yeldon is a pass catching is a pack, pass catching back. That's the role that he can play for you. Uh, he's a big target, he's six two, six one, six two. So he's not a small guy, um, and that's the role that he can play for you. Uh, Devin Singletary right now is fifty targets for uh, fifty targets, forty one receptions. Zach Moss twenty one targets, eighteen receptions, um, and of course just a few a handful for Yeldon and Jones combined. But if Buffalo can utilize their running backs as true checkdown options, that's something Baltimore is not prepared for, especially since they like to bring so much pressure and they like to play man-to-man. -man. Uh, it's easy for a back to sneak out. And Buffalo could take advantage of that because once you get past that blitz, there's not a lot of people past the line of scrimmage. And if you get a back like TJ Yeldon in the open field, I think Bills fans are going to feel comfortable with that. Even though it's not your preferred option, Yeldon's faster than Moss and Singletary, so I'm good with that. Go ahead. Go, go, go. If I see TJ Yeldon with eight eight targets in this game, I'm going to be a happy man uh, because I know they're not panic targets, right? They are, okay, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. Especially since as physical as the secondary is going to play for Baltimore, that plays right into your hand if you're a Bills fan because you haven't used your, your running backs as true check down options all season. So use them now. It's something that they're not prepared for. Baltimore on the opposite side, you would think that a young quarterback like Lamar Jackson would be leaning on his running backs. Completely the opposite. 64 targets, uh, 51 receptions, accounting for about 15.8% of their actual passes uh, go to running backs. 18.6% uh, of their receptions go to running backs. That is actually not a lot when you look across the scale of the NFL. Um, that That is actually not a lot at all. Buffalo, um, if I'm looking at it correctly, Buffalo's 56 receptions from a running back position accounted for only 12% of total receptions. So again, two teams that don't really utilize the running backs in the passing game. Buffalo can use it to their advantage because Baltimore's so aggressive. Baltimore would not have the same success against Buffalo. So that that is not an either-or scenario. 
Um, Buffalo could absolutely use the running backs to be a dangerous weapon. And I guess that's my main point here. If we're going to talk about things that you need to look for, let's revise. Let's go back and look at those those four bullet points. Number one, don't get fooled by Baltimore's by Baltimore's pulling guards and pulling center and their offensive line motion. Don't get fooled by that. You still need to stay disciplined and, and stay planted. Two, they're going to try and disrupt your physical route. So if plays break down, that's okay. It's all right. We've seen that all season. Uh, the Bills will will handle the the physical the physical nature of those defensive backs fine. Josh is going to need some time in the pocket. Baltimore does blitz a lot, so that's where some of that wrinkle could happen, uh, where we might see Josh take a little bit more pressure than usual. But this offensive line has done a fine job this season. No reason to think that they won't continue to do that. Number three, beat Lamar the way that you beat Josh Allen in previous seasons. Let him be let her let him play the quarterback position. And remember, they lean heavily to the right side of the football field. They do also utilize the left side, but the right side is really where the money's made. And finally, don't be afraid. If Mark Andrews catches a bunch of passes. That's okay. Go get him. All right, Paul from Hashtag. Have a good one.